You've seen our research on social media. Now join us as we dive deeper into the public health topics of our time, featuring new studies and findings generated by our faculty and researchers committed to advancing health equity. From the Department of Population and Public Health Sciences at Keck School of Medicine of USC, this is Preventive Pros, the podcast. My name is Fang Chi Guo. I am a postdoc scholar in the Department Department of Population and Public Health Sciences at USC. Um, I'm working with Professor Sharif Farzan. And she is the VPI of this research project. My research focus is um, cardiovascular and metabolic health um, in um, in people like of multiple age groups. So I'm kind of interested in the um, you know risk factors for life course, you know cardiovascular disease risk. But I have a particular interest in cardiovascular and metabolic health among children. So today I'm going to discuss my study about stress and cardio cardiometabolic health. This study was recently published in the American a Journal of American Heart Association. So um, this study focuses on the long-term effect of stress in childhood and its long-term effect on cardiovascular and metabolic health in adulthood. Um, so cardiovascular and metabolic diseases are a group of diseases you can think of diabetes, heart diseases. So these diseases are the most prevalent chronic diseases um, in the United States and worldwide. So these diseases often pop up in middle to late adulthood, but but their roots start growing in childhood. So um, these years, the occurrence of um, cardiometabolic diseases are more commonly seen in younger generations. So it is important to investigate the um, cardiometabolic profiles in the younger population and its associated risk factors. So um, traditional risk factors for cardiometabolic diseases, including aging, lifestyle, socioeconomic status, and so on. Our study digs into the stress angle. So stress among children in the contemporary society is a growing concern. Over the years, more and more studies have found that stress is a big player in the cardiometabolic game. For instance, stressed out older adults have a higher risk of developing heart diseases. But in children, the impact of stress on long-term cardiometabolic health has not been fully understood. Therefore, our study steps in to fill this gap. So we tracked stress levels from childhood to adulthood, um, trying to untangle how childhood stress links up with cardiometabolic health in young adulthood. So we studied 276 participants from the Southern California Children's Health Study. Um, these participants had been enrolled in the Children's Health Study as children with their parents when they were in kindergarten or first grade in 2003. Um, they were followed up until 2014 when they were in high school. Um, recently, we resumed the follow-up cardiometabolic assessment on them when they are entering young adulthood. So um, using, using data from this longitudinal cohort, in, we investigated perceived stress reported by participants' parents on themselves in childhood when children were about six years old. Then perceived stress reported by children themselves in adolescence and young adulthood when they were about 13 years and 24 years old. So perceived stress were repeatedly measured three times from childhood to a young adulthood. Um, um, and then using perceived stress levels measured over time, we categorized study participants into four stress groups, uh, which are consistently high stress over time, um, decreasing stress over time, increasing stress over time, and consistently low stress over time. And we tested that if these four groups of people's cardiometabolic health differ. The tool we use to measure perceived stress is it's called perceived stress scale. So this is um, easy to use, um, self-administered self, uh, questionnaire that it is available online. So the four item version um, um, can be finished within one minute. So it's really an easy to use tool. And then, so the questionnaires evaluate participants' ability to control the difficulties in their life. So for example, the questions are like, in the last month, 
how often have you felt that you were unable to control the important things in your life? So and then, um, so and then, um, the participants responded to each question on a five point scale. So zero means never, and four means very often. So and then we um, um, sum the you know the answers up, and then um, you know the participants finally get a final score. So higher scores indicate more perceived stress. Our study is a follow-up assessment of children's health study. So study participants were um, recruited when they were about six years old from eight Southern California communities. So I, I want to say our um, sample is a um, representative sample of Southern California. So um, among the 270 Six participants, we have half female, 62% um, whites, and about half Hispanic. So um, our study from that childhood perceived stress as an import, important contributor to the risk of cardiometabolic diseases, um, but many other risk factors may, may also influence the development of cardiometabolic diseases. So for example, um, we, we all may have known that as we age, the risk for cardiometabolic diseases increase. Age is a big contributor. Um, in addition to that, so some demographic factors such as men, black risk, Hispanic ethnicity, and people with lower socioeconomic status um, all have higher risk for cardiometabolic diseases compared to their counterpart. So and these factors were all adjusted in our analysis. In this study, we found that individuals with consistently high perceived stress from childhood to adulthood are associated with higher risk for cardiometabolic diseases in adulthood. Um, this risk including higher risk for obesity, higher, perceived, higher percent fat, higher blood pressure, and worse vascular health compared with children with consistently low perceived stress. So the big goal of our research is to contribute to early life cardiometabolic disease prevention. Our study has highlighted a key connection between childhood stress and the long-term risk for cardiometabolic diseases. This finding suggests that introducing coping strategies for stress management during critical developmental stages, such as childhood adolescence, could facilitate cardio cardiometabolic disease prevention. To clinical settings, we advocate for an improvement in early screening for stress among children. We suggest using perceived stress skill as a tool for stress screening in children. So like I have mentioned before, the perceived stress questionnaire is available online, easy to use, self-administered, um, and the four item version can be completed within just one minute. So it is an easy to use option for pediatricians and healthcare providers. So um, the perceived stress skill um, is available for children um, 12 years old and older. So it might be not appropriate to use for younger children. We track participant stress levels from 13 years old to about 24 years old. And we found that stress levels during this period are significant. However, stress levels before the age of 13 may also contribute to had your metabolic disease in later life. Unfortunately, our study cannot answer this research question, but future research may step in to fill this gap. Assessing stress levels before the age of 12 is a bit challenging because the perceived stress skew is eligible for children age 12 and above. So for younger children, we may need to identify an appropriate stress assessment tool. Another gap I wanted to talk is um, related to the cardiometabolic endpoints we assess in our study, such as blood pressure, obesity, and body percent fat. Will this suggest a risk for cardiometabolic diseases in the future? It's important to note that they are not a diagnosis of cardiometabolic diseases. So our study stopped in young adulthood to thoroughly investigate the link between childhood stress and the incidence of heart diseases, a longer follow-up period, at least until middle adulthood is needed. Our research team at AIR2 is dedicated to investigating cardiovascular and metabolic health among children and young adults. So we also measure some other risk factors such as air pollution that might be associated with future risk of cardiometabolic diseases. We currently have several interesting research projects in progress and we look forward to sharing our new findings with you in the near future.
Preventive Pros, the podcast, is produced by the Department of Population and Public Health Sciences at Keck School of Medicine of USC. To learn more about any of our episodes or to subscribe to our monthly Preventive Dose newsletter featuring the latest in public health research and news, visit pphs.usc.edu forward slash podcast. Thank you for listening.